650 pounds on a bale of cotton. Yeah. Right? So okay. if you take 650 pounds, you'll net 500 pounds of gin cotton and 150 pounds of, of uh, waste. Trash. Uh -huh. Which they don't like that. They've been trying to get it down, which cuts me out, but that's okay. <laughs> but that's that's what we started with. Now, you heard a story, you use browns and greens. If, if uh, Rashid was here, he'd say, where's your green stuff? Well, I got some green down there. <laughs> but this is all agricultural and, and silviculture ways I use. I use cotton. Can I ask one more question about yeah. that? Mike, when they, these improved gins that do a better job getting the lead out, does that make the gin trash stronger or weaker, better or worse? Is, 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 the, it, lint, it, is the lint... Well, see, you get you got cotton seed in here. Yeah. Well, they don't get all the cotton right. seed out. Is the, lint, good, is the lint the goodie? I mean, the seed's the best. But the seed is what the, the best. Seed is a byproduct. Is the lint next? The lint's next. Then and the, the trash. Shook. Yeah. This is last. This and then is, what they call puffer trash. Which right. Is, this is, and you see this this dusty part right here? That is really the best part right there. Oh, mm -hmm. believe it or not, that is the dust off the off the pod. Mm -hmm. When the bloom opens up, and it goes through the all the agitation and everything, you you end up with a dust, and that's 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 the good. So that's the good. That's the no, good. I was wrong. Man. That's yeah. the good. I thought that was the weakest that's part. About, of it. That's the good. As far as as far as what I end up with, sure. uh, and let me say this, since we're all organic and we all believe in walking the talk, all cotton is GMO, can't do anything about it. But you got to keep in mind, it's kind of like you, you, got, you got Asians, you got South Americans, you got, you got Americans, you got, you got different people. All our bodies are the same, but when you get, you know, you forget what's on the outside. Well, the GMO, the bugs that, and I, I'm in the bug business. I grow bugs. That's what I really do. That's how, that's what rebuilds the soil. Not, not fertilizer. And structure helps. It's in, you know, adding structure to your soil is important. But what's important is putting those fungi and bacilli and all these little critters. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that do the work. They're the workers. They work 24 hours, seven days a week. But the point I want to make about the GMO, because I have to defend this from time to time, is... When you get down to carbon and nitrogen, there's no such thing as a, a GMO carbon mo molecule or a, or a GMO nitrogen molecule. I mean, the bugs, the whole idea is to take this waste and facilitate the bugs converting it into poop. That's why they use worms mm -hmm. to do uh, soil remediation because the worms can run it through their gut. And because they have a gut, they can break it down and they can purify and they can stabilize. I can take the, the pea humus, which is this right here, we'll get that in a minute, and I can mix pea humus and a few other things, and I can stabilize most heavy metals and reduce what they call the bioavailability, which means it's there, just like there's uranium in the soil all around us, like there's arsenic in the soil, but once, once it gets out and you start separating and, and refining it, then you get into trouble with side mm -hmm. effects on human bodies and stuff like that. But what, what the compost can do, and I do this in bioremediation, is you can reduce the bioavailability of lead, cadmium, chromium, all these metals that are har you know, harmful to our bodies. So when you get back to the cotton, yeah, it's GMO, and it's more of a political thing. It's more of a status or position thing than it is anything else. Because when you get down to carbon and carbon, if we took... If we took a bunch of cows and ground them up, you got Herefords, you got Angus, and you got this, and you got that. But when you ground them up, you essentially got carbon and nitrogen. So that's 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 my argument, and so far it's it's withstood the, the attacks of people who don't like anything that's GMO. Which I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with one way or the other. But cotton is what makes my compost special: cotton and the peat, and now the minerals. Another but, thing is it exists. Let me see. Here. <coughs> Something's got to happen with it. Yeah. And this is a higher and better When I took over that gin, I took the gin operation over seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And cotton is used in diapers for the whole war. Well, they've been pushing this gin trash up for about four years. And they just kept pushing it and pushing it. And of course, what it did, it created an embankment. Every time the water run off the gin, which it didn't have gutters, all that water would go down to that cotton and it just hold it there. And it held it there 365 days a year, even the driest time. 
And I, when I started cleaning up, I would literally, we bogged a bulldozer, D9 bulldozer bogged down, literally. We had to get a backhoe to get it out because the soil was so saturated that that gumbo clay became like mortar mix. Mm -hmm. And that thing just dropped. We had to pull that. But anyway, let's move through this so we can see some other things. So, wait, 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 so the cotton fibers break down in 12 weeks? I can break it down in 12 weeks as far as getting it close to stabilization but we're working with like the slow food business we're doing the slow composting and we'll get into that in a minute but yes I can have compost ready in 12 weeks <coughs> the cotton fibers so. yeah this will be this will be this will be gone this will be gone in about eight weeks you won't even be able to tell us any cotton if you do an active windrow but I don't do active windrows anymore so I have I use the biodynamic process and can you also say that um that you, we've done the, the herbicide and pesticide analysis. Oh, yeah, on we have to do that. And that's and a beautiful, yeah. A, a total non detect by the we've time we've got we some handouts the over there showing that absolutely everything Process. University of Georgia can test. They've tested on the herbicide side and the insecticide. And we've pesticide. also done a heavy metals. We've done pathogen test, pathogen. heavy metals, the whole nine yards. And like I say, we, we're clean, non detect, all the way down on it. So we, we're pretty proud about what we've got. But cotton trash, this is cotton trash after three years. Mm -hmm. After three years, Mother Nature.